This episode of Southern Gothic contains descriptions of a violent and horrific murder. Listener discretion is advised. It was called the murder of the century, Georgia's darkest and most infamous crime. And due to America's increasing modernization, the story of a horrific slaying of a rural family in Bibb County, Georgia, spread across the country like wildfire, captivating the nation with sensational headlines and scandalous details. A family slaughtered Nine of a household hunting the hidden hacks. Is Tom Wolfe guilty, or is he nine persons murdered? A member of the butchered family charged with the bloody slaughter of a whole family. George's tragedy. Bloodiest of crimes. A scene of bloody horse war. Nine victims to massacres. Brutal pack. Nine times a murderer. A scene of bloody car. Modern Macbeth. He murders nine when the bloodiest is George's unparalleled crime. My name is Brandon Schecksneider, and you are listening to Southern Gothic. Richard Franklin Woolfork was born in Bibb County, Georgia in 1834 to Thomas J. Woolfork and Fanny Wadsworth. His father, a member of a prominent North Carolina family, migrated to Macon in 1828. As a wealthy and influential figure in the community, Thomas was able to send his son to school, enrolling the young man at the University of Georgia in Athens. There, Richard graduated in 1854. That same year, he married Susan Moore. The couple had three children soon after. Their youngest and only son, Tom, was born several years later, on June 18, 1860, the eve of the Civil War. And within several months of Tom's birth, Richard would leave his family to join the Georgia State Troops, where he'd serve as a captain of Company A in Ross's battalion. The aftermath of the war was not easy on the Woolfork family. Richard's livelihood had fallen into economic disarray and the family suffered a great tragedy. On June 25th, 1865, Susan Woolfork, the mother of three and matriarch of the Woolfork family, died at the age of 24. The family buried their beloved mother under a holly bush less than a hundred feet from their farmhouse. Richard then sent his three young children to live in Athens with Susan's sister, Fanny Moore. Little is known about the Wolf Fork children's time in Athens, but eventually they returned home to their father's plantation. It was after he remarried, this time to a local woman named Maddie Howard. The pair would go on to have six children of their own. All the while, Richard would continue to build up his family's cotton plantation where they resided. Unfortunately, 
it was there on this plantation where the quote, bloodiest, blackest chapter in Georgia criminal history would occur less than two decades later. On Saturday, August 6th, 1887, sometime between 2 and 4 a.m., nine members of the Wolf Fork family were brutally murdered with a short-handled ax. Richard, Maddie, their six children, and Mrs. Temperance West, Maddie's 84-year-old aunt. The only survivor was 27-year-old Tom Wolf Fork. He claimed to have escaped the unknown killer by climbing out of a window before fleeing to his neighbor's home for help. He had arrived at the house wearing only his socks and underwear. With the neighbor's help, a crowd of men were then roused and gathered, but none would willingly enter the farmhouse while it was still dark. None except Tom, who re-entered his family home and went from room to room confirming his entire family was in fact dead. All of them slaughtered in their beds, except his two half-brothers, Richard and Charlie, discovered laying on the floor of their parents' bedroom, and his 10-year-old half-sister, Annie, who was found kneeling in front of an open window as if she had unsuccessfully tried to flee from her killer. The scene was gruesome. An entire family had been murdered in cold blood in less than a half an hour time. News of the tragedy spread quickly. By morning, hundreds of locals descended on the Wolf Fork farmhouse, and a coroner's inquest was held on the spot to investigate the crime. Suspicion immediately fell on Richard's eldest son, Tom. Authorities found that there was no evidence of forced entry or theft, and Tom's story of escape seemed unlikely. His behavior seemed odd, showing no emotion or grief for the horrific demise of his family. And most convincingly of all, Tom was found to have specks of blood in his ears and a bloody handprint on his leg. Neighbors also claimed to have seen Tom using an ax the previous day while making baskets. The same ax that was found in one of the rooms smeared with blood. With so much evidence mounting against him, the coroner concluded Tom's guilt was likely. So the sheriff carted him off for further questioning, slipping out the back to avoid the growing crowd's calls for the man's lynching. The next day, the nine victims of this horrific crime were taken to Macon, Georgia in a long, slow procession of five hearses with almost 30 carriages following. Scores of people gathered at the roads to see them pass. And when the Wolf Fork family finally arrived at their final resting place in Rose Hill Cemetery, nearly 2,000 people had come to pay their respects. And the family was then laid to rest together in two rows. Meanwhile, the sheriff back in Bibb County had discovered even more evidence after dragging the farmhouse well. A bloody shirt and a pair of drawers belonging to Tom. <laughs> 
News of the grisly murders electrified the state of Georgia and beyond. The story rapidly spreading across the nation with massive newspaper coverage, including a front page article in the New York Times. These stories were often more lurid and sensational than factual. And in no time at all, Tom was given a nickname, Bloody Wolf Fork. Tom Woolfork was indicted on nine counts of murder, but he would only be tried for his father's death, a trial which would become one of the most publicized in Georgia's history. Tom Woolfork has been described as quarrelsome and irascible by nature often characterized by those who knew him as perverse, obstinate, and eccentric. A 27-year-old man who was living in his parents' farmhouse after failing as a farmer and merchant himself. and was believed to be bitter and angry, yet in spite of his reputation, he married a woman named Georgia Bird. But the woman left him only three weeks into the marriage later telling reporters. No, he is not crazy. It is simple meanness. He is the meanest man I ever saw, and there is nothing too mean for him to do. Many also claim Tom's relationship with his stepmother Maddie was strained, leading him to purportedly believe she stood in the way of him one day inheriting his father's wealth which at the time of the murder included an 867-acre cotton plantation. So when the trial finally began on December 5th, 1887, this is what was reported to be his motive. Two days before I left him, he told me he'd burn up the family. He came into the room and said, Georgia, father has not fixed me up and I'm gonna burn the family. Father's rich and got plenty. If I can't get any of it, none of the others shall get it. John Rutherford, one of Macon's top attorneys, defended Tom. But only 10 days later, after just 20 minutes of jury deliberation, Woolfork was convicted of murder. The verdict was appealed, however, and the Supreme Court of Georgia granted Tom a new trial, citing the issues concerning the first trial that not only had damaging evidence and inadmissible testimony been permitted, but during the closing arguments in Bibb County, courtroom spectators had interrupted with angry calls for his execution. Then. After several more attempts to fairly try him, Wolf Fork's fifth and final trial was held in Houston County in June of 1889. This time, the trial lasted three weeks, and just as he had before, Tom continued to maintain his innocence. During this period of time, the Georgia judicial system did not allow a criminal defendant to take the stand in their own defense. However, he was able to make an unsworn statement to his peers on the jury, denying his guilt. He had done the same during his first trial. Yet the evidence stacked against him was overwhelming. And despite much of it being circumstantial, this jury came to the same verdict as the previous one, this time after 45 minutes of deliberation. On June 24, 1883, Tom Woolfork was convicted of murder for the final time and sentenced to death. On October 29, 1890, in Perry, Georgia, Tom Woolfork was hanged at 1.30 p.m. before a crowd of 10,000 people much to their disappointment, there was no last-minute confession. Woolfork continued to proclaim his innocence 
in his final address to the crowd. I, Thomas G. Wolfock, realizing the existence of an infinite, wise, and hold God, and so as me him, knowing all that I have ever done, and fully understanding that I must stand before the judgment bar of God, and that today, in a few hours, I shall be called into his presence, do solemnly declare my innocence, and I leave as my last declaration that I did not take the life of my father or any member of his family, or have any knowledge of the person or persons who did the murderous deed. His body was then buried, separated from his family, in Orange Hill Cemetery in Hawkinsville, Georgia. And Tom Wolfork was one of the last people in the state of Georgia to be executed publicly. In spite of the certainty of Tom's guilt portrayed in the media during the late 19th century, some historians question the veracity of the verdict, noting the impact of the media sensationalism and the impartiality of law enforcement and juries. The case itself was largely built on circumstantial evidence and hearsay, and as damning as many of these claims were, None were actual witnesses of the crime, and most were unable to be verified. In addition, Woolfork was the only person the authorities ever considered as a suspect, despite several other names being brought forward. Then, in 1898, it's purported that after Simon Cooper, the son of a Bibb County sharecropper, was lynched for murder in Somerville, South Carolina. A notebook was found on his body, which included the scribbling. Tom Woolfork was mighty slick, but I fixed him. I would have killed him with the rest of the damn family, but he was not at home. Supposedly Cooper, whose family lived near Woolfork's property, had even suspiciously skipped town not long after the Woolfork's murder. Nevertheless, there's no concrete evidence or any other claim that exists to truly refute Thomas Woolfork's guilt and the brutal slaying of his family. In 1964, E. Merton Coulter, a University of Georgia professor, visited the site of the massacre. After the crimes had been committed, the farmhouse went unoccupied for years, eventually serving as the offices for an automobile club in 1909. But what Coulter had found over five decades later was nothing but ruins. All that remained in the respectfully hidden and anonymous spot in Bibb County were nothing more than remnants of the farmhouse chimney and the family's well. But most notably is a holly tree that still stands there today. This tree is believed by some to mark the burial spot of Susan Moore. My name is Brandon Schecksneider, and you are listening to Southern Gothic. Southern Gothic is an independently released podcast written and produced by Brandon and Brianne Schecksneider. This week's episode features a special cameo by Caitlin Murray and Kenneth Strader of the Haunted Heart podcast. For special access to members-only content, including access to the series Southern Gothic, 
The Monsters, as well as updates and links to our social media. Visit southerngothicmedia.com today. Lucky Little Shacks.